welcome everyone to today's Latin Public Health Forum. I'm Aaron and I uh, am a current high school senior at James Logan and I founded this forum to tell people about current public health issues. I believe it's important for everybody to be aware of this and I hope you guys learned something today. So today we'll be presenting on chronic kidney disease and substance abuse in adolescents. Um, and I'd like to start off today's presentation with a talk to current US-based outbreaks. First of all, we have salmonella infections from canned homes. There have been 230 illnesses, 96 hospitalizations, and three deaths. Uh, salmonella passes through the stomach and colonizes colon the intestines. Some symptoms you may experience are diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, and high fever. And avoid uh, uh, eating uh, malachite or rudy bread cantaloupes, and make sure to wash your hands and clean the mouth clean the food properly. No treatment is needed for mild symptoms, and if your symptoms are a bit severe, you may need antibiotics. We also have um, stereo infections in peaches, nectarines, and plums. Um, there have been 11 illnesses, physicians, and one death. Uh, so the stereo infects cells in the intestines and spreads basal laterally. You may experience fever, muscle aches, and tiredness. And you should avoid consumption of these foods distributed by agents and farms. Uh, just like for salmonella, there is no treatment needed for mild symptoms and antibiotics are needed. Um, there's also been um, dengue cases surging globally. Um, dengue is a virus uh, where it, it uses its envelope protein to bind with reception to cell membrane to uh, get an access to the inside of the cell. Um, you may experience a headache, nausea, vomiting, pain behind the eyes, with glands, rash, and muscle, bone, or joint pain. Um, this uh, dengue is transmitted through a specific type of uh, mosquito, so make sure you use bug pollen when you're in the area. Um, there are no specific antiviral agents uh, for dengue, so it's just supportive care and treatment. So let's start off our uh, presentation on chronic kidney disease. Today we'll be covering impact and mechanism, prevention and treatment, and final inversion technologies. CKD is essentially gradual loss of kidney function because of damage to the tissues. So there are five stages of CKD, five being end stage, requiring transplant or dialysis, basically a replacement for kidney function that you've almost completely lost. The kidneys do quite a lot of things. Like they, they sort of filter out your blood, so they regulate like the ions, like your uh, blood alkalinity, volume, pressure. Um, pH, and they remove waste and produce um, EPO, erythropoietin, which is a hormone for, um, uh, for producing the stimulus and production of red blood cells. A retin is an enzyme which is important in the regula regulation of blood pressure, and uh, vitamin D3 and gluconeogenesis. So in the early stages, you will often experience no symptoms, but in the later stages, you may experience fatigue, swollen ankles, shortness of breath, nausea, blood, and urine. So the impact of CKD is that it's a pretty common condition, and about 15% of U.S. adults have it. And Medicare spending uh, for patients with CKD age 65 and older exceeds 50 billion annually. It's a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, which is a leading cause of death in CKD patients. And progression to end-stage renal disease requires dialysis or kidney transplant, which is significant impacts the patient's quality of life and survival rates. For example, the transplant, they'll need to be on immunosuppressants for the rest of your life. So some complications of CKD are cardiovascular disease, anemia, bone disease, electrolytic imbalances, and decreased immunity. So first I'd like to explain, um, before we go on to the cause of CKD, I'd like to explain um, how exactly the kidney works or the functional unit of the kidney. So the functional unit of the kidney is called a nephron. How it works is that uh, the, the renal artery enters the kidney and spills into afferent arterioles. These uh, go into the they go to the nephron and become a, they go to the glomerulus or a set of capillaries at the filtration site. Now this area, um, it's right it's right here. Um, over here is where the filtration happens. There are basically three barriers where uh, stuff where blood is filtered through. So first, we have the, the endothelium of the capillaries, which only which only allows small a, a bulk flow of small uh, small molecules through, so that prevents proteins and uh, red blood cells from uh, getting through. Um, and then there is also the basement membrane, or essentially the extracellular matrix, 
of the endothelium and it sort of provides an extra layer. And finally, we have the Bowman's capsule, which is essentially the opening, of, or basically the opening of the nephron. This layer, has, this epithelium has extensions called podocytes, which wrap around the capillaries to provide an extra layer. So, so when, when blood goes to the glomerulus, uh, uh, the filtering is, goes into the nephron, and essentially just blood plasma without any proteins. It goes into the nephron and goes to the proximal convoluted tubule. This is uh, the region where all the glucose in your blood is reabsorbed. In normal person, you, ex you, have, uh, you should have zero glucose in your urine. Now, if you have diabetes, um, you have an excess uh, of blood sugar. That means that you'll have to filter out a lot more sugar in that area. And that puts a strain on the cells in the area because the intracellular of glucose levels would be way too high, causing ER and mitochondrial stress, which is clearly bad for the tissues. Now, over time, it can cause damage. Um, so, um, the rest of this, well, after the filtering goes to the proximal convoluted tubule, it goes to that loop of pen. The ascending loop will have a real loop of water, while the ascending loop absorbs ion, reabsorbs ions like sodium, calcium, potassium, etc., uh, magnesium. Um, and then it goes to the distal convoluted tubule. This area is um, important because it's where the lipophilic or also known as steroid hormone called aldosterone uh, takes effect. It controls sodium and uh, sodium reabsorption, and that's important in the RAAS pathway, which essentially um, helps us regulate our as another means for us to control our blood pressure. And finally, it goes to the collective duct, which then can go to the renal pelvis and um, eventually exit the bladder as urine. Uh, so the collective duct is special because it's where uh, water retention is regulated. Um, ADH, it takes effect there, and the more uh, antidiuretic hormone there is, the more water retention, which means there will be more of the pores over there to transfer water out with the left duct back into the body. So let's get to the other cause, hypertension. Hypertension is damaging because the nephron, is, there's actually a lot of capillaries in this area. There's, and like, if you have hypertension, there's a lot of pressure in the blood vessels, which over time can cause damage to them. So it's important to regulate that with medications which are related. Some other causes are glomerular nephritis, which is essentially just inflammation in nephrons, which is, and then there's also polycystic kidney disease, well, like formation of cysts, cysts in the kidney, which don't really contribute to function, and then long obstruction, and finally recur re recurrent kidney infection. The diagnosis in kidney, you have blood tests, urine tests, imaging tests, and kidney biopsies. So um, one way we do it is we measure uh, GFR, glomerular filtration, filtration rate. This is sort of, uh, although it is a glomerular filtration rate is actually very difficult to measure as it takes uh, process where you have to inject the body with synthetic, a synthetic um, carbohydrate called inulin, and then you have to measure how fast that is removed from the body, and that's um, quite a, a, a time-consuming process, so people just estimate. If your, uh, if your GFR is quite low, it's indicative that your kidney is not doing too well in the function. In the urine, we check if there's any proteins or blood, because there shouldn't be. That, as I mentioned, there shouldn't be any blood cells or protein, because that in the, or else the barrier function in the kidney is not working properly. So kidney biopsies essentially just take a piece of the kidney out, and you can examine the tissue under the microscope to determine if, it, if anything is wrong. To prevent CKD, you should reduce your salt intake and drink adequate amounts of water. Make sure to manage your blood pressure, blood sugar, and weight, as these uh, diabetes and hypertension are two major causes. Exercise regularly, quit smoking, reduce alcohol or intake, or limit it, and get regular checkups. To treat CKD, uh, if you have uh, high blood pressure, you should take ACE inhibitors or angiotensin in to receptor blockers. So you guys probably don't know how that works yet if you do not know the RAS pathway. So how this essentially works is that um, when your body determines uh, it has a, a low osmolarity, right, um, or uh, it, it'll cause, it'll release more red in response to the cause there to be more uh, sodium uh, re reabsorption. And renin actually uh, uh, converts angiotensinogen, which is always present, into angiotensin 1, which is still inactive. 
And then this is converted by ACE, or uh, basically another enzyme, which converts it to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 uh, stimulates uh, aldosterone release, which has more sodium reabsorption, but it also has the effect of increasing mean arterial pressure, basically blood pressure. So this is how our kidneys contribute to, um, it, to uh, changing our mean arterial pressure uh, on top of our, our system with the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system controlling blood, blood pressure. So that's how ACE, inhibiting uh, ACE or angiotensin 2 would uh, reduce the, the effects of like, increasing blood, the, the kidneys increasing blood pressure. So that would help with hypertension. You can also take uh, medications that balance like, levels of phosphorus, calcium, and parathyroid hormone body, which is also responsible for uh, uh, dealing with calcium levels. And uh, you can take diuretics to also help maintain proper um, Blood, blood osmolarity in case you have trouble of producing urine. So um, if you have diabetes, it is important to maintain good blood sugar control, slow progression of CK. And in end stage uh, renal disease, you may need renal replacement therapy, basically replacement for your kidney function, which, uh, which is either dialysis or transplantation. Now there are two types of dialysis. One, hemodialysis, in which um, you have, you have a permanent port in your arm, like done by surgery, and then you have to go to a dialysis clinic three to five times a week to put your blood through a dialysis machine, essentially an artificial filter to so like clean your blood. There's a peritoneal dialysis, which essentially has, there, you have an opening in your abdomen, and you, you can do this at home, and you have a machine that is a specialized cleaning fluid that goes into the empty space of your abdomen, comes in touch with the lining of the blood vessels, and helps like, diffuse out the, like, the waste or whatever in your blood, and then you can like, drain out this fluid. This sort of also helps clean your blood. Finally, we have the kidney transplant, which essentially you'll have to, you take a kidney from somebody else who is compatible, and then you'll have to be on immunosuppressants for the rest of your life because your body reduced the cells in the sport, and if your immune system is active, they will attack your kidney and, your, and the transplant will be rejected. To do this, we have to weaken the immune system to quite a considerable level, so, it, so, you, so your kidney will not be rejected, and as a result, you will be immunocompromised, and you will have to be on antibiotics. So, man to manage the kidney, you should control, you, if you have underlying conditions like diabetes and hypertension, it is generally good to control them. Um, you should take medications like ACE inhibitors or diuretics if applicable, and always try to live a healthier lifestyle, which includes uh, diet, exercising, and not doing alcohol or smoking. So we've had advanced in CKD research such as early detection methods, as in like using like the C seeing it in genetics or like certain like levels of certain molecules to, um, to see if you're, you're more likely to develop CKD. There's also there's been stem cell therapy to help like regenerate kidney to uh, regenerate damaged kidney tissue, so to improve kidney function. We've been working on wearable and implantable dialysis devices. So you don't have to go to the dialysis clinic three to five times a week. And finally, there have been remote monitoring technologies, which sort of monitor the different levels of blood. So CKD is more prevalent than most people expect. Treatment is difficult. Technology is out of the way. And finally, uh, prevent CKD with a healthier lifestyle and avoid smoking and alcohol.